Hey everyone, it's Rob with Passport to the Parks and today is Wednesday, March the 13th and I'm here at Disney's Caribbean Beach to check up on what's happening with the Disney Skyliner. Uh, the station looks gorgeous. Uh, it's right across the, uh, the waterway for me here. I'm actually right in front of the Spyglass Grill, which is absolutely one of my favorite places to, heat, to, heat, to eat here at Caribbean Beach. Uh, so I highly recommend that if you've never uh, had the chance to go there. Definitely recommend it. It's very, very, very good. But we are here to check on some uh, Skyliner stuff. We'll do uh, some walking around. Uh, we'll see what's new. We'll talk about some stuff. Um, and let me see who's coming on here real quick. I always like to say hello. Everybody comes on so quickly. Uh, it's hard to, to grab everybody. Matthew, uh, Matt, welcome. Tim, welcome. Uh, that crazy guy, hello. Uh, Christina, welcome from Buffalo. Jackie, hello. Lee, good afternoon. Bennett, hello. Sam, Disney Nut, very cool name. Andy, welcome. Uh, Brian Bond from uh, Nebraska, very cool. Kurt, I am great, thank you for asking. John, uh, good afternoon. Uh, where'd you go here? 94 days till you come down, awesome, awesome, awesome. Scott, uh, uh, let's see, Scott, Steve, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, let's see, see you in August. Uh, oh, you're coming down in August, very, very cool. Oh, see you again, <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes I can't uh, read with the, uh, the sun in my eyes here, or behind me. Uh, Janet, welcome. Sharp Studios, welcome. Do you think about uh, getting the new parking lot names and opening the bus terminal? Uh, getting the new parking lot names and uh, opening the bus terminal. Uh, I haven't heard anything about parking lot names. We're talking about Hollywood Studios. Uh, they're going to change the, uh, the names from Pluto and Mickey or whatever they are and Goofy. Uh, that would be kind of neat if they did that. Uh, Janet, welcome from the UK. Uh, Christina, you know what, let me turn you around. Uh, I know you guys don't want to sit here and stare at me. I always say that. Uh, we'll at least look at the, the beautiful Caribbean Beach station while we're talking to some folks here. Greg, welcome. Uh, that crazy guy, you just hit uh, 8,000 subs. I saw that today. That was very, very cool. You know what, I actually might do a giveaway because uh, I'm really, really psyched about the 8,000 er, subscribers on YouTube. Uh, it's very cool. Thank you to everyone who has subscribed. And I have a ton of stuff that I've been uh, accumulating along the way that I'm going to start doing some really cool giveaways. So I will put something together and we'll do that. And it'll be some really cool Disney stuff that you guys will definitely, definitely love. Uh, so I'll get that video out as soon as I can. No brainer 60. Do you think, uh, uh, do you think Disney DW, what is that? Uh, we'll be busy during the second half of August uh, because of Galaxy's Edge opening. Are we saying Disney World in general? Uh, I think some of the other parks will, will be drawn over to Galaxy's Edge, uh, which would be a good thing. So you might see some lack of attendance in other parks, but it is the summer. August is one of the heaviest months uh, in, in general for Disney. So I don't think you're gonna see a huge crowd difference. Uh, you're just gonna see an influx with all the, the Galaxy's Edge stuff. Glenn, hey, uh, coming to Caribbean Beach in 56 days. Very, very cool. Greg, what do I think of Odell Beckham? I love it. The Browns just signed, signed the dotted line to win the AFC North and absolutely be Super Bowl, Super Bowl contenders. So I thought that signing was amazing. Let's go Browns, Alex, let's go Browns, absolutely. There's all my Browns fans out there. Kurt, uh, you deserve so many uh, more subscribers. Your channel is so insightful. Thank you very much, I do appreciate that. Kevin and Teresa, welcome, welcome, welcome. Sharon, hope the Skyliner uh, open, hope the Skyliner uh, so you broke up there. When it opens, uh, I'll be on the hunt. So your, your thing kind of came through a little broken up there. I'm not exactly sure what you're saying. But uh, hopefully it's going to maybe soft openings is what you're saying. Um, what we found out so far, and I'll, I'll walk a little bit here as we're talking, uh, that they are going to start the cast member um, testing uh, at the beginning of April. So we know that. Uh, they're not going to be doing anything through March. All these signups and everything for, for cast members is starting in April. So they're actually gonna start putting physical bodies on these gondolas uh, beginning in April. And that's obviously gonna be the, the uh, line over to Hollywood Studios. Uh, let's see, ooh, I got a super chat that came in. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Matthew Kine, thank you so very much. Always appreciated. Uh, 9.99, the super chat. Love it, love it. Thank you very, very much. Uh, Gator Mickey, welcome. Jay, welcome from New York. Uh, D. Woods, welcome. Uh, anyways, so the cast members will start at uh, the beginning of April, going back and forth between Hollywood. 
Next in line would, would definitely have to be the uh, line between uh, Pop Century, Art of Animation, over here to Caribbean, which is the line that we're looking at right here. Uh, that has to be uh, next. They're, they're doing so much work over at uh, Pop Century and on this side of the line. The Epcot line is definitely going to be probably last because of, you know, trying to get through the Riviera, uh, the stuff that they're doing over at International Gateway. So that's going to be the last. Um, I would, I would assume that they're probably going to start running gondolas. I'm, I'm really surprised that they haven't yet over to Pop Century. They're doing a ton of work. They keep going out in the lake, over an Hourglass Lake, and doing work on those towers. Every time I go over there, there's uh, crews up on the towers uh, doing wiring and, and other things of that nature. So I'm not exactly sure uh, what the delay is over there, but uh, hopefully we'll get that process moving along. Uh, as far as gondolas go, um, I believe pretty much all the gondolas are here on site. There are, over at Pop Century, there's probably only about 20 hangar arms left sitting uh, where there were hundreds over there. So uh, in the yard in front of the Caribbean beach here, it looks like they're pretty much full to that uh, between 300, 350 gondola mark now that they're, they've approached. Uh, there's a ton of gondolas going back and forth, obviously between Hollywood and Caribbean here. But as far as getting all the gondolas in and processed, um, they're pretty much up to capacity with that. Again, that's going to be between 300 and 350 gondolas. And they have some gondolas on the side of the fence over here. They're kind of scattered in different areas, but most of them are actually hanging in the yard and pretty much ready to go. Uh, let's see, who else do we have here? Let's see, Rick Pomp. Um, that is a language that I am not familiar with. Oh, from the Netherlands. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, Thomas, welcome from Germany. Sharon, uh, not able to make an annual trip this year, so I really appreciate these live updates from New Jersey. You are very, very welcome. Hopefully you will get down here uh, as soon as you can. Dan, you love my channel. Very, very cool. Thank you. James Hay from Seattle. Uh, let's see here. NH uh, Loot Photo and Video from Denmark. Very, very cool. Uh, Edwin, 20 September. I uh, have, uh, have a lot of languages that I can't uh, pronounce here, I'm sorry, but uh, talk amongst yourselves. I do appreciate everyone coming from all over the world. Becky, uh, Simon, is, uh, Simon, that is part of the Caribbean Beach building. Uh, is that Galaxy's Edge with the scaffolding around the distance? Oh, okay. Yes, this is the, uh, this is the Skyliner Station at the Caribbean Beach. Uh, so anybody who's new here, I will kind of go over it real quick here. Uh, the Skyliner runs from uh, Pop Century and Art of Animation, which is right down in this direction. Uh, the line comes into the Caribbean Beach, which is basically the central hub. And that's basically what we have to really keep an eye on as far as when the Skyliner is going to open. It all kind of is going to centralize around how, how fast they get this uh, particular station done over at Caribbean Beach. Which they are moving along, but they do still have a lot of work, especially around the front entrance. Um, a lot of paving work, a lot of the, the bus station up in front. Uh, they're constantly doing the work on the inside so this this really has to be ready to go in order for them to open uh, any aspect of any of the lines here so uh, like i said it, it comes from pop and art over into caribbean beach you can transfer inside here and you can head over to hollywood studios which you can just see in the distance there there's gondolas actually running back and forth or you can transfer and head over over the caribbean beach uh, through jamaica and aruba over to the riviera Station, which is still under construction, and then eventually into Epcot's International Gateway. So just in case anybody was new, just wanted to fill them in uh, exactly um, what's going on. Edwin uh, Hasari coming from the Netherlands in September. Very awesome. Uh, my heritage is from the Netherlands. Unfortunately, I, I can't uh, uh, speak any uh, Norwegian or anything like that, but uh, my great-great-grandparents came from Norway, um, so my grandfather, father, every, you know, we're all into Norwegian. We love uh, Norway, obviously, over at Epcot, so very cool to see you here. Much appreciated. Michael, would you say the Caribbean Beach uh, with gondolas going over, are they noisy, uh, and will it uh, affect privacy? The Skyliner itself is very, very silent. Um, Doppelmeyer has come up with some, some really great technology that they're using now that, as far as when it's running, it's almost virtually silent. Uh, the only thing we're hearing now is construction noise, 
that's happening in the stations. But when you stand over at Hollywood Studios and you're right next to it, you, you can't hear anything going in and out of the stations. The only thing you can hear is when you're standing in the parking lot. Sometimes you can hear a little bit of noise as they go over the sheaves, uh, which are the towers. Uh, but that's about it. As far as the station noise itself, um, you really can't hear much of anything. They're very, very quiet. Liam, the new construction at River, at River Country Reflections Hotel, uh, Nature Inspired Resort will have DVC Villas, uh, will have 1,700 regular rooms and is scheduled for a 2022 opening. Oh, they're not gonna hit the, the 2021 mark. That's kind of disappointing, um, but that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, that's definitely gonna be something that I'll, I'll try to get over there and follow more. Uh, I think the Cove is gonna be the next kind of big thing that's gonna be happening as far as um, construction goes for a hotel. Uh, obviously the, the Riviera is gonna be the next one here. Um, Coronado Springs, the tower is virtually uh, getting ready to be opened in the uh, beginning of July. So that's pretty awesome too. But we're definitely gonna keep an eye on that, uh, that nature inspired resort. I think that's gonna be really pretty. And again, fingers crossed that they will uh, do something inspired by river country. Hopefully their pool area would be something river country inspired over there since it's on the, the old property there. Get a little shot here before we walk all the way across. So I'll zoom in here and you can see in the front again, that structure right there, uh, which I've speculated all along is gonna be a bus stop. Uh, so they will have the internal shuttle that will run inside Caribbean Beach here, which is going to be much needed. Uh, there are walkways over from Jamaica, and it's really not too bad of a walk if you're coming from uh, Trinidad here, Jamaica. Uh, even Barbados isn't too bad, but if you're coming from uh, Martinique, um, Old Port Royal, it is pretty. It is a pretty far walk if you want to get over to use the Skyliner. So the internal bus shuttle will be a, a huge benefit to get people in and out. Uh, so we'll keep walking along here. Richard, hello. Tim, uh, will Art of Animation, oh, we'll be at Art of Animation in a week. Uh, how's construction there? I was just over there. Uh, as far as inside the resort, uh, it's been a little while since I walked through there, but just general maintenance and stuff. They're doing uh, work on over in the Nemo area because they're building the restrooms over there for the Skyliner and obviously the Skyliner construction is pretty much what's going on over there. The station itself is coming along. Um, like I said, they're going to start testing gondolas back and forth there. I would say it would have to be in the, at least the next couple weeks, if not sooner. Uh, but shouldn't have any issues over there. It's, it's a beautiful resort. Um, uh, you'll love it, trust me. I love going there. Food court is really good too. Do have some really beautiful scenery as we come through. Jamie, the rope on top of the gondolas, do they move back and forth or are they stationary? Uh, let's see, the rope on top of the gondolas. Well, the, the way the system works is the haul rope, the main rope that you see is constantly moving. So it's moving in a circular motion around a bull wheel that's located inside the station. So it's constantly spinning. Um, what happens is the gondola itself has, oh, it's called a grip on top. And uh, as, the, uh, as it's moving along the haul rope, that grip actually tightens onto the haul rope and it's being pulled by the haul rope. When it comes into the station, that grip releases and then there's wheels inside that takes the, the gondola and slows it all the way down. So, it, whoa, geez. This guy scared me, honking his horn coming past me. But um, it slows all the way down to a, a very snail's pace inside and it goes around there's two different tracks inside uh, the front track is for uh, regular loading for guests to to walk on and off and then there's a secondary track that runs behind it where they would load uh, scooters and wheelchairs where they can actually stop gondolas back there 
So as the guests get on board, uh, it circles around that, that bull wheel. Um, the gondola is still being pulled by those wheels and then that grip will reattach to the haul rope, which is constantly moving at one speed. Once that uh, grip reattaches, it gets pulled out of the station by the haul rope and then uh, comes along. So nothing on the gondola itself is actually moving. Uh, it's actually just holding on to that haul rope and the haul rope is, is what's pulling it uh, across the, the sheaves. And the sheaves are the, uh, the, the wheels on top of the towers. So right here is, we can tell they're still doing a lot of work. Uh, there's really nothing as far as pavement or anything uh, in front of that, that bus station. This all has to be redone um, or worked and, and paved uh, in order for pedestrians obviously to get it in and out, the buses to get in and out, um, any of the walkways inside. So there's still, there's still a lot to do over here at the station. And they're obviously working a lot on the outside of the station. Uh, that tower is just uh, uh, just for the general look. You know, there's, there's different towers. You can kind of see, let me look here, on top of Trinidad. It's just uh, part of the different look, the Caribbean island look here where they have the, the different towers on board. So this is going to be an outdoor marketplace is what this is going to look like when it's done. But this, this really has to be complete in order for them to be able to, to get this opened up. So we're gonna head in through Jamaica. You can see this is one of the walkways that they've created now. So you can come from this direction through Jamaica uh, and you'll be able to cross right here. There's a pedestrian crosswalk. There's also a second one on the other side of the building as well. And that's also where the, uh, the traffic will come in. The buses will, uh, will circle around inside there. So we have, to, uh, we have to walk through the Jamaica building. If you've done these with me in the past, we have to kind of zigzag a little bit through. We'll take a look at this station, then we'll walk through uh, Jamaica and Aruba as well. So if you're interested in the Caribbean beach, you get to see some great views. We'll see what the construction process is. They, they had a lot of Jamaica tore up. So we'll see what's going on with uh, that as well. And if we have some time, maybe we'll, we'll shoot over to the other side. We'll, we'll check out old Port Royal and just have some fun. Hey, Michael, you caught me live. Awesome. Michael, you have to share your, uh, your intuition and your thoughts. Nicola, uh, mind, uh, mind that bus rob. I would hate to be squashed before you, uh, we come from Wales, UK to see you. Uh, absolutely, I, I definitely do not want to get hit by a magical express bus. That would not be magical. There is a big concrete barrier between me and that bus, so I think he was just honking to be funny. Douglas, are there any gondolas on the other lines? There are not as of yet. Uh, I come here pretty much every day checking to see the progress to see when they're going to start the other line. Like I said, the Pop Century and Art of Animation line should be the next to start. Right now they just continue the testing back and forth between Hollywood Studios and the Caribbean Beach here. So this is all brand new walkway. This was all built within the last uh, few months. So this will kind of all intertwine and then there's another little crosswalk that you'll be able to cross over towards the, the station. Kind of get a better idea of how many gondolas they have in there now. The yard is pretty much filling up. And again, there's about 300 to 350 gondolas now that, uh, that CWA has uh, shipped in for Doppelmayr. Uh, you can see that they're storing still some unprocessed gondolas right there on the fence. Uh, they basically come in on these flatbeds. There's five to a flatbed. Uh, there's some there. There's also some on the other side of the pole there. And they get processed here. The hanger arm gets put on, the grip, uh, whatever else they, they need to do. 
it looks like they come pretty complete. These gondolas actually have the, the power supply on top. Uh, most of the gondola is, is fairly well designed when it arrives on property and they, they basically just add the hanger arm and the grip on the top. You can see that they're still running the gondolas back and forth between Hollywood. Jamie, uh, what bus driver that honked at you probably knows you and that's why he's honking you. Yeah, that could very well be too. I didn't think about that. More and more people are, are definitely saying hello. Uh, a lot of the Disney cast members are really awesome. Uh, Security is getting to know me more and more. Uh, even when I'm coming in and out of different places, they're like, hey, we know you watch your, your blogs and all that, which is very cool. So everybody's awesome. I think everybody generally is just excited about it. You know, everybody kind of wants to work together and be a part of it, which is all I want to do is make sure that, that everybody is just a part of this. It's just a lot of fun. And uh, if I can walk around and, and share this, share a little bit of joy with you guys, then that's, uh, that's good for me. Liam, uh, have you seen uh, Plex, the talking robot that chats up guests at Planet Hollywood at Disney Springs? No, I have not been inside Planet Hollywood. In fact, that was uh, something a couple of people have asked about Planet Hollywood. Uh, I'd like to go there and have some dinner sometime. Uh, so we might, uh, might land up doing that. Uh, my parents are coming down for a little while too, so we'll probably hit, hit up some restaurants um, along the way, so maybe that'll be one of them. Pauline, Rob, can you say hello to Harry, my son? We watch your vlogs together. Hello, Harry. Awesome to, uh, awesome to have you here, my friend. Thank you so much for watching. It's always appreciated. Hope you enjoy it and hope you get down to Disney sometime soon. Mike, uh, do you know if each station is going to be themed, uh, where they are located, and what are the themes? Yes, they are absolutely themed. Like I said, the theming here is, uh, is a marketplace. So, so security going by me here. I thought he was gonna say hello. Uh, this is like an outdoor market, uh, marketplace. The Pop Century and Art of Animation is kind of a retro station. Uh, it's got some really uh, some kind of swooping roof lines and everything. It's like um, kind of a, a modern kind of twist over there. Hollywood Studios has, it blends in totally with that, that 1920s, 1930s um, Hollywood theme that they have over there. I'm, you know, if, if you've seen the front of Hollywood Studios, that's what that station is gonna look like. Um, the International Gateway is just beautiful. Um, it's very sort of elegant looking, and it has uh, the, the paintings of the, um, the, um, the Florida cranes on the front. Just a really pretty station. So the theming is definitely uh, for each, each station kind of coincides to where it's at. Greg, uh, Planet Hollywood food is uh, totally amazing. We're checking out. I ate there years and years and years ago. Uh, it's been a while since they've done all the refurbishments and stuff in there, so I definitely want to check that out. Elvin, welcome. Pauline, 231 days to go. Gator Mickey vlog community uh, is cool. Absolutely, uh, I love the community here. Thank you everyone for being here. Disney, the Fox merger is finally coming to a close and scheduled for the 20th of March, 71.3 billion. That is insane. Uh, everything that uh, Disney is acquiring is amazing. Um, you know, Disney obviously has a grand plan for everything that they do. Uh, Fox is going to bring in so many other entities. Uh, a lot of stuff with, I'm not even sure, I think Fox has like the Fantastic Four and stuff like that too. So th there's all kinds of stuff that's going to be coming over with that Fox merger. But uh, Disney, it's, it's just amazing. All the stuff that they're going to be able to do and accomplish in the future with all the things that they're accumulating. And they do good things with them too. Um, you know, whenever they're acquiring these things, you know, they try to take things that, you know, obviously have been dormant for a while. Lucasfilm is a perfect example. I mean, look what they did with Star Wars. I mean, like it or not, we didn't have Star Wars forever. And Disney, uh, I mean, look what Disney is doing with it. Let me get you a better shot here over at the station there. And this is the yard. This is where all the gondolas are stored. And that goes basically across the entire front. There is probably uh, at least 300 or more gondolas that are stored in there. Uh, there's a bunch of gondolas that's on the line right now on the haul rope going over to Hollywood. I would say there's probably at least 70, maybe 75 gondolas running back and forth. And there you can again see the, uh, the top of what will be the bus station.
So it just looks really, really nice. Lewis, do those gondolas have uh, air conditioning? They do not. Disney already announced that. Um, but there's going to be a natural ventilation system on board that's going to keep you very cool going through the air. Uh, that's a lot of what they're doing testing right now. If you saw the yellow gondola, that's what they're doing is they're testing um, the temperatures inside. They're testing airflow. They're doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, that's why it's unwrapped so, so they can do accurate testing with that. There's also tinting on the outside of the gondolas, which will prevent the sun from really glaring inside there. And again, you're not going to be on these gondolas for very long. So as you're going back and forth between um, Hollywood and Caribbean, uh, it's less than two minutes. Uh, same with uh, between Pop and Art. The longest, the longest line is going to be the one that heads right over our head, over top of us here, down to um, the Riviera, and then eventually over to Epcot, which will probably be about a seven maybe a seven to nine minute journey over there. But the air conditioning, uh, you know, that, that's, kind of, uh, that's kind of an old news thing right now. It's, you know, people were so worried about it. It's not gonna be a serious issue. You know, as the, uh, as the Skyliner may expand into the near future, if they do a phase two, phase three in other directions, you know, they could look at different possibilities. They can look at uh, uh, larger gondolas. There are gondolas out there that will haul, you know, 30 and 40 people at a time, just depending on what uh, direction Disney wants to go. Uh, so many different options. There are gondolas that have heating and air conditioning on board. So the, the options are out there. Uh, Disney's making, you know, the choices based on what they think is uh, best right now and they can expand that into the future. Becky, I wonder if they will try to hide the view of the yard on the Disney's Hollywood Studio line. Uh, I don't think they will. They're not gonna put up fences or walls. I, I don't believe that they would. Um, once, I think it's gonna be cool. We're, you know, we're seeing it right now. Let me turn around again. We're seeing it right now with all these gondolas covered in these white tarps. But you gotta, you gotta picture all these gondolas are gonna be unwrapped. They're gonna be beautiful colors, all the characters on. So that's something I personally would wanna show off. If I'm coming over top, you know, and I'm, I'm seeing these, I definitely wanna see those gondolas. And while it's running, uh, most of these gondolas are gonna be on the haul rope anyway. So uh, all you're pretty much are, is gonna see is the, um, uh, the arms or the, uh, the stations that hold the gondolas inside there. So here is our towers that are starting through Jamaica. This is gonna be one of the higher points that you'll be on the, the gondola as you're coming through. You know, there's various levels. And this is, uh, through here is pretty high and over across like uh, Buena Vista, as you're going down the side of Buena Vista Drive towards the uh, or, uh, boardwalk parking lot. That gets pretty high through there as well. But again, I'm not a heights person, but I'm not gonna have any issue riding it. It's, it's completely enclosed. Uh, it's very safe. It's gonna be a lot of fun. The, the views are gonna be beautiful. You know, again, you know, you're gonna have the, the music on board. You'll have the announcements. Of course, Disney will, will have you know the announcements of what you're seeing and what you're going over so there'll be a lot uh, going on inside It'll be like riding the monorail looks like a lot of what they had tore up through here i'm pretty sure this is where they were doing some of the work maybe not it might be a little further down now actually i think this is uh this is where they were doing the work so this is all pretty new here All right, so it's good to see some of this is done. They do have some more fenced off area here that they're still working on.
Harden our pixie dust as we enhance this area for the Disney's innovative transportation system, the Disney Skyliner. Hmm. I don't think any of what they're doing through here right now has anything to do with the Skyliner. They're running, this is all pipe work. I believe they're running new sprinkler systems through here. Maybe eventually we might get some landscaping around the towers. Yeah, this is all new construction through here. So they have all this tore up. So they completed where we were just at and now this is really tore up through here. So you can see they're just doing a lot of uh, pulling up the earth here and re replacing pipes underneath. I believe they were doing sprinklers and stuff over in that area before. Joe, my friend, thank you so much for the super chat, $20. Good job, Rob, thank you, Joe. Always much appreciated. And another super chat as well from, uh, this is a very dark blue one, Zippity Doodad, $1.99. Um, this is so hard to read, uh, three weeks away. Uh, hope to see you, my man, absolutely. It's a dark blue bar with black writing inside the bar so it's virtually unreadable but thank you very much for that super chat joe thank you for the super chat always uh always great to have you guys here appreciate it dave c uh joe you are an awesome guy absolutely joe you've been uh, very supportive through this entire process and it's very much appreciated no brainer 60 maybe water cooling yeah who knows i mean here's a lot of the the pipe work, I mean, anybody who is familiar with this stuff maybe would know better than I would, but uh, from what I saw before, it was all kind of sprinklers. They were putting new sprinkler heads and stuff, so I'm sure they're doing a bunch of stuff. But the towers, if you guys haven't been chatting amongst yourself here, I haven't been reading much of the comments, but, oh, that's a pretty shot. Look at that. That's kind of pretty. I want to take a picture of that. As far as the towers getting painted um, some people have really come up with some some good theories if they do decide to paint the towers hopefully they will put some paint on these ones going through the Caribbean Beach uh, but if they do they could hold off to the very end because of the testing phases as they're testing uh, the gondolas over the towers they're doing a lot of stress tests which means they're they would be looking for fractures any kind of cracks any kind of damage in the the towers themselves so to paint the towers would uh, sort of detract from that. So once all the testing is done and they're for certain that everything is on the up and up, then maybe there's a possibility that we could get some paint on the towers. They don't all have to be painted, just these ones through the Caribbean beach and I would be happy. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous sight over there. For all you Caribbean beach fans. Eric, uh, electric power, gas, and water. So everything's being done over here. They're really doing a number, but it'll be done. It'll, just a couple months, they should be uh, done with this whole process. And it'll be back to being beautiful again. Riviera is definitely <laughs> coming along this massive structure over here the pool area is supposed to be really gorgeous it's gonna be this huge sort of lagoon pool area that's gonna be in the back so if anything you know if you don't like the the building itself if you don't like what they're doing with the Riviera uh, the pool area is really going to be gorgeous, I think, once that is done. And there's going to be some restaurants and some nightlife and stuff over there. So it should be a lot of fun once it is actually done. That crazy guy rumor is that the Riviera will be Grand Floridian prices. Whew, I don't know. That's. I mean, there's supposed to be these, these very large suites, like two, two and three room suites with kitchens and like full apartment kind of suites. Uh, and it's DVC. But they will rent out if all the DVC rooms don't get taken up, then they will rent out to the, the general public as well. Uh, you know, I'm sure it's not going to be cheap. It's not going to be a moderate level. 
uh, that you would find here at the Caribbean beach. Anton Plants, good work, Rob. Thank you so much. Earl, Disney World just raised one day ticket prices by $30. You're kidding me. By $30, really? I didn't even see that today. That is unbelievable. Joe, going back to work, we'll watch tonight. Hope this helps, Rob, with all you're doing. Joe, thank you so much. Another $50 super chat from Joe. Joe, you are far too generous, my friend. Um, I can't, really, I can't thank you enough for, for your generosity. Dominic, welcome. Robin, uh, cannot wait to go back down to Florida while that Riviera is big. It certainly is. It's, uh, it's gonna be quite the, uh, quite the massive structure when it's done. It's a very nice day here today. Uh, it's not really hot. The sun is shining, but it's not beating down. There's a little bit of a breeze here. So people out trying to enjoy themselves on the beach. So you can see ahead of us that we're heading towards the, the Riviera Station. And I'm actually going to head through here so we can get a really cool shot over there. We're going to walk around. Get some great views from uh, higher up once we get back in here. I just displays Wow Joe, absolutely. Joe's been phenomenal with his uh, generosity through here. Much appreciated. No brainer 60, $159 is the Christmas week ticket price. That is unbelievable. I mean, I can understand a little bit of a ticket hike for Galaxy's Edge, but a $30 price increase, that's... I mean, it may be a way to try to defer some people from, from coming to try to limit some of the crowd levels. But that's a, that's a painful way to do it. All right, so we are inside Aruba. We're uh, 54 to 56 over here in the right and coming down here to visit. But we're just going to run up the steps here real quick. I'm going to get a shot of Looks like they got all the, a lot of the roof shingles on. That looks really nice. Okay. They've really done some progress on this station. I love the way that looks. That looks really pretty. Michael, they, uh, they'll probably be planting uh, bushes and trees around the, the towers to keep people away from them. I would agree. Eventually they'd have to put some sort of landscaping around there, we would hope. Albin, do you know what they're doing with the gondolas each night after they're shut down? Uh, they basically get shut down and moved into the yard 
and stored uh, in front of the Caribbean beach. That's where they'll, that's where they'll be stored each night. Uh, I can also do any kind of maintenance issues, uh, cleaning those kind of things right inside the, the station there. Destiny, welcome. Thank you for being here. DJ Darcy, welcome. Uh, Mr. Cruz Fever, awesome to have you here. That crazy guy, I thought the uh, $30 raise in ticket prices was for the week between Christmas and New Year's. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to look into that. Uh, I haven't seen that this morning, so I'll have to do some reading and, and see what I can figure out about that. Richard, they show the prices in the news. Prices going up and down depending on uh, from week to week. Bob, is it Shell, Shellvoy? Hopefully I'm saying that right. $20 super chat. Thank you very, very much. Very much appreciated. Thank you so much for that $20. Becky, do you have to uh, get off the station to switch or can you continue through? Uh, as far as we know, you should be able to continue on through. So this is going to, um, well, my hand is really close there. You should be able to come right through and circle through. Uh, they will, you can exit here and you can enter here, uh, but you should be able to make uh, the turn and head over uh, into what would be the, the boardwalk parking lot and then onto Epcot. Now you can't exit in the boardwalk parking lot, that's just a turnstile over there. But you will be able to enter and exit and you should be able to just go all the way through and continue on. So they don't want to create too much of a traffic jam where you'd have to exit one gondola and get onto another one here. So as far as we know, uh, you should be able to go all the way through in the, in the inner track workings and then uh, head on out in which either uh, direction coming from Epcot or heading to Epcot. Richard Williamson, thank you very much. $1.99 Super Chat. Very much appreciated. Russell, you have great live webcasts. Thank you very much. No brainer, uh, the $159 price tag is Christmas week. Uh, the ticket minimum is the same price, but with a higher, busier days up to $159 now. So that, wow, that's just crazy. Obviously, I'm an annual pass holder, so we'll see how that affects the annual passes in the future as well. Growing Ears, uh, hey from Pennsylvania, my family and I will be there in June, uh, so ready. Can't wait for you to get down here. Uh, June is going to be a great month. Uh, really, the, uh, the sun is definitely going to be shining. I might get a little bit of rain, but June is, June is a pretty nice month to be here if you, if you like some heat, but not uh, just start getting a little bit of the humidity coming in from the spring months, but uh, I think you'll have a great time. Jay, they're talking, uh, they talking all the gondolas off the line, or they're taking every gondola off the line at night. Uh, that's a lot of work. Actually, it's a, it's a very quickly moving process. And in fact, Disney released a video a while back to where they showed the inner workings at the, at the Caribbean Beach Station. As the gondola comes in, uh, there's a transfer track that takes it right onto the yard. And they, can, they remove these gondolas within probably 20 minutes, maybe 20, 25 minutes at the end of the night. Even now during the testing phases, um, it's, a, it's a very quick moving process. So uh, no, no longer than it takes to you know, go park the monorails or you know, park the boats or the trains or whatever you would at the end of the night. You know, everything has to be parked and everything has to be stored. But uh, it's, it's actually a much faster moving process than you would think. Dominic, do you think the Skyliner will possibly extend to Coronado Springs in the Animal Kingdom in the future? Uh, I do. In fact, if there is a phase two, that's where I would say that it would go next. It would be to extend from, from this area and head into Coronado Springs uh, and into Animal Kingdom, maybe, a, a, maybe back and forth between Animal Kingdom Lodge to the Animal Kingdom. Again, you also have the All Stars um, down there, which is a huge resort. Disney is trying to accommodate these larger resorts, Caribbean Beach, Pop Century, Art of Animation. That's why the Skyliner is here because there's so many people that stay in these resorts, so the largest ones. All Stars fits into that category as well and Coronado Springs. So that would be definitely a phase two. If this works out, I would see it moving down towards that way. Michael, garaging of the gondolas will be automatic. So yeah, it's an automatic process. If you look at the video there, I think from what I remember seeing, there's a person in there kind of guiding the gondola along, but yeah, as they, as they move in, there's the inner tracks um, there's transfer tracks and then they move into the, into the yard themselves. Joe, again with a super chat. 
Thank you so much, Joe. Thirty dollars again from Joe. You are unbelievable. I mean, you're, you're far too generous, Joe. I, seriously, I'm I'm at a loss for words. You even said that you're going to be leaving, and now you come back with another super chat. You are the man. Thank you very, very much, Joe. I think everybody is uh, everybody has been thanking you on here. It's uh, it's incredible. Michael tabbed conveyor belt moves the gondolas onto these storage tracks. Very cool. If, you know, if you guys go and you, you search YouTube and you, you look for gondola transfers and stuff like that, there's all kinds of videos not having to do with Disney itself, but how the gondolas work, how Doppelmayr works. So you can do some own, your own research and, and see some very cool things out there if you're uh, so interested. Uh, Jeremy, one deluxe resort with only bus, uh, only deluxe resort with only bus transportation. Yeah, that would be Coronado Springs. So they definitely need, uh, or deluxe resort. Hang on, which one are we talking about here? Coronado Springs is a uh, moderate. Oh, yeah, an Animal Kingdom. Absolutely. Especially back and forth between the Animal Kingdom. I think that would make a lot of sense uh, for people to go back and forth between Animal Kingdom Lodge and the Animal Kingdom itself. Robin, that would be cool to see it uh, go that way towards the Animal Kingdom uh, and staying at the Lodge. Wayrez says, uh, Joe, you are the king. Absolutely. Joe, come on, Joe. That is, Joe, that's way too much, my friend. Seriously, that's another $20 from Joe. That is, that is amazing, Joe, but it's, uh, it's, it's really way too much, my friend. Seriously. But thank, thank you so much. I can't thank you enough, Joe, really. Liam, Disney is going to start uh, running buses directly between Disney's uh, hotels in Blizzard Beach starting sometime this month instead of having to go to Disney Springs and transfer to Blizzard Beach. Uh, that I haven't seen much about either. Uh, you know, they took that transportation away directly from resorts to Blizzard Beach a long time ago. Um, I'm not quite sure if that. I haven't seen anything on that. I will try to investigate that a little more myself and and figure that out but uh, that's definitely an interesting thought i didn't i don't think blizzard beach really has the the volume hang on let me get a picture before i leave up here we'll start walking around again Just the, uh, the water parks uh, don't have the, the sheer numbers uh, to warrant some of these things. Uh, but that would be interesting if that's actually the case. We'll, we'll see. I know Blizzard Beach is over there towards All Stars and Coronado. So as far as uh, the gondola is actually running into there, I don't think it would warrant it. Just like Disney Springs. A lot of people think uh, Disney Springs, that the gondolas would eventually run over there. If they did that, that would be pretty far into the future. I wouldn't see that as a phase two, because again, Disney Springs doesn't have the volume that the theme parks does. You know, they've done a lot of work over there and there's a lot of people going in and out, but it's not, it's not massive numbers. They're not having the, the huge crowds of people like you have the mass exodus uh, at the end of the night from the theme parks. And that's really what they're looking for. You know, the, the, the Skyliner transportation is really not meant to take the, the daily guest back and forth you know at two o'clock in the afternoon they want the skyliner to be there for uh you know when people all the crowds are going there in the morning so they can transport large groups of people and then especially at night you know you have these firework shows that let out and there are just tens of thousands of people that come out so they want to move these people as quickly as possible so that's really what the the skyliner is designed to do I'm gonna let a cart go around us here that's behind me. So Pop Century Art of Animation in Caribbean Beach. In-room dining. So this is how they deliver food to your room apparently. Hello. Is this a room service cart? That's awesome. Evan, hey, how are you? 
Jeannie, if uh, anyone still needs passes that is an annual pass holder, you can go to undercovertourist.com. The prices aren't reflecting any of the, uh, the changes as of yet. Well, grab them while you can. Apparently, it uh, looks like they're going to be uh, raising the prices here soon. Brent will be at the Caribbean Beach in 10 days. Can't wait. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You saw the, what's happening in Jamaica. So as of right now, if you have a choice, you know, I would try to stay on the other side. I'd stay away from Aruba and Jamaica right now. Trinidad has always been my personal favorite. Barbados is really nice as well. So if you guys are interested, looks like I still have a bunch of people on here, 216 people, which is awesome. We can uh, keep moving around here a little bit. We can head over towards Old Port Royal. I know Caribbean Beach is really popular, so if you're interested, I can do that. Dawn from Canada, I am at uh, Caribbean Beach. We were taking a look at the Disney Skyliner progress over here. So we looked at the, the station over at Caribbean Beach and we just left the Riviera station. And now we're gonna start uh, heading over towards Old Port Royale just to take a look at it. Just cause, hey, it's Disney, it's gorgeous and why not? Bobby World, I think uh, work on the roads and express lanes for the buses is what they are doing for Disney Springs. I think the work on the road and the express lanes. Uh, as far as Buena Vista Drive, uh, there's really no work that's really being done down there. A lot of the construction as far as road construction is all being done over by like Osceola and Victory. They have a lot going on over there. Uh, there's still some construction, I believe, with the I-4 exit onto uh, Buena Vista over by Disney Springs. The, uh, the parking garage, the third parking deck is coming along over by Disney Springs as well, which we now know is going to be the grapefruit garage. So now they'll have orange, lime, and grapefruit. I was personally hoping for the banana garage because I just love bananas. Renee, can I pipe in the smell from Old Port Royale? I will definitely try to do that. If I can uh, come up with a smell o vision I need to uh, get with Willy Wonka, I think, on that. William Kenner, $10 with the Super Chat. Thank you very, very much. Great job, Rob. Really appreciate the info. I totally appreciate your support. Thank you very, very much. Malcolm, is the path uh, from Beach Club to Hollywood Studios still open? Yes, it is. That entire pathway all the way from Epcot through Beach Club, Yacht Club, Swan and Dolphin, Boardwalk, that is all uh, completely open now. It can take you all the way to Hollywood Studios. It's a very, very pretty walk. I've actually done it. Uh, I've done it live, so if you want to go back and check that out. So anybody that's just coming on, you can kind of see what's going on through Jamaica here and Aruba. This has been an ongoing process. They're just doing electrical, plumbing, uh, you name it. They're, they're kind of tearing stuff up, just doing some, I guess, much needed renovation work through here. We're gonna head over the bridge towards uh, Caribbean Key here. Just beautiful, beautiful sights. You know, as much as we may have our opinions about the, the Riviera, I mean, just as a view itself, I mean, I think it really looks pretty here when you're standing, you know, you're standing against the water right on the bridge. And like I said, once they, 
once they are finished with the the bay area and that pool area i think it's gonna be really pretty at night they've been uh really kind of selling it with uh, when uh, disney or when walt disney did his european trip uh, and all the the culture and all the things that he really loved over there they're kind of selling that as far as the riviera as well as sort of incorporating walt disney's european trip into the culture here with the uh the riviera resort so i like how they're trying to combine the two um but i think overall i think i'm, I'm definitely going to give it a chance and see uh when it's done just how pretty it is hello now this side always 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 looks gorgeous this is definitely island style You can really get a see a feel of all of these uh, these I don't even know what you'd call them the uh, the steeples the rooftop pillars or that's what they're building on top of the Caribbean Beach Station just uh, keeping with the the theme of all of the the different islands through here. Let's see, uh, BP buckets could they zoom back in on the tower. On one of these towers, is that what you want to see? Hold on, I got You said the wood feels good on your feet, right? Yeah, I can do that. Okay, I'm gonna do that. There you go. It's smooth, right? Hopefully that's what you wanted. Liam, would you like to uh, get a Matterhorn-inspired uh, Mount Fuji coaster in Japan Pavilion at Epcot World Showcase? Yeah, if you've uh, if you've joined me through any of my Epcot rants i would call them uh, i am not a fan at all of the guardians of the galaxy roller coaster that they're putting where ella ellen's uh, universe of energy used to be i'm not uh, downplaying putting a guardians of the galaxy attraction or a roller coaster i just think the placement of it is terrible i don't think it belongs there i think it stands out like a sore thumb and did i go the wrong direction no i think i'm okay look at this I love how these uh, lizards actually blend in with their environment. So he's been sitting on these green leaves. You see these in all different colors. That's a very, very green one. I haven't seen one that green in a while. But anyways, uh, you know, Guardians should have been done somewhere else. Um, in fact, we were talking, I'm gonna get on, on a whole rant here and I'll, I'll get back to the Mount Fuji thing. Um, we're talking about the uh, Star Tours over at uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. What would have been a great idea is to take Star Tours, which is kind of standing out like a sore thumb now since Galaxy's Edge, you know, it's not really incorporated into Galaxy's Edge. You know, it could have been cool to retheme that into a Guardians of the Galaxy uh, ride of some sort and have that, that simulation ride for Guardians. You know, more of a, you know, you're going through space, the spaceship, all the Guardian stuff. Um, Epcot, the theming over there, they really should have stuck with, you know, the progress, technology, those kind of things, and not just jammed, you know, the Guardians just because it's a popular movie into Epcot there. What they could have uh, had a really great opportunity to do, is I'm gonna stop here while I talk about this stuff, is take the mountain ranges, like uh, put in Japan, like a Mount Fuji mountain range and make a roller coaster back there. In Germany, do like a bobsled um, style ride back there. You could have these very, very beautiful mountain ranges that would have blended into the actual scenery. Um, you know, you wouldn't have to make it into, you know, try to blend it into the sky. You know, the Guardian's coaster is right next to Spaceship Earth and it just detracts from how beautiful that, um, you know, those pictures, that scenery used to be, now you have this giant roller coaster building there. So they should have taken and constructed mountains back in the, uh, um, in the World Showcase area. I think it would have been a lot better. So that, that's kind of what uh, Liam was asking. Uh, Liam, it should have been uh, Wally -E instead of Guardians there. You know, there's all kinds of ideas that you could do. It's just, uh, you know, they're putting the wrong themes in the different areas, and I, I don't think that it works out very well. Ratatouille. It's perfect. I mean, it's, it's right where it needs to be. You can barely see the building. 
Uh, it's behind Paris. It's behind France back there. Um, so that's going to be awesome there. Guardians, Guardians is just really just going to irk me for, for a while what they've done with that. Uh, I love most of the stuff that Disney does, but the Guardians just way out of place. In fact, look at this. Look what we see over here now that we're talking about it. Oh, hold on. Let's see if I can zoom in. Can you guys see that? That is the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy building that you can see standing in the Caribbean beach. Just over the, the treetops there, you can see, let me see if I can get it here, uh, Spaceship Earth. Just to the right of that is that giant blue Guardians of the Galaxy roller coaster. Now tell me that does not stand out like a sore thumb uh, in the landscape here. Let's see, zoom in on the Riviera Tower. There we go. You guys can see that. Michael Kodak ruined a Mount Fuji coaster. Uh, that's why they wouldn't be completing it. Potentially the Fuji film sponsor. Yeah, a lot of it has to come down with sponsors, especially at Epcot as well. You know, I'm sure there's, there's reasons behind everything. It's just, again, thoughts and pipe dreams and just things we like to, to chat about here. Uh, same thing with my Pixar land over at Hollywood Studios. Will it ever happen? Who knows? Is it a great idea? I think so. Would it help with uh, traffic flow through there? Of course. But I, I think Disney really could have did some reimagining with some things and, and done things a little differently. Bobby World, uh, my thoughts on the Play Pavilion and Future World. From what I've heard, it's supposed to be pretty awesome. It's People are kind of uh, deeming it the... Uh, what was that over there? What did they just build the NBA experience? Um, I just blanked out. What they just tore down for the NBA experience at Disney Springs. <laughs> Somebody help me out here. What was that? Disney Quest. Uh, it's like Disney Quest 2.0. It's supposed to have amazing technology through there. So that that is something I think should be pretty cool. You know, it kind of fits into the theming. It's supposed to be, you know, future technologies and a lot of interactive things, which is really what Epcot is supposed to be about. So I'm kind of loving that idea. Um, does it seem like they're just kind of putting something in there to put something in there? Maybe. Um, but I think it's definitely better themed than what the Guardians is over there. Liam, if they build a Brazil pavilion for an updated version of the Three Caballeros, as is based in Mexico uh, and Brazil, and the Coco ride uh, would, would uh, let's see, would ride at me. I think you got cut off there. But yeah, th those are great ideas too. I mean, so many, so many different ideas that you can come up with. Disney Quest, everybody's got my Disney Quest. Innovations 3.0. April, and Abigail's Blue Bee. Yeah, Robin, you, you see what I mean about this, uh, the Guardians coaster just kind of standing out? I didn't even realize until I was standing right here that you can actually see that giant monstrosity all the way over here. Which is cool. I'm not knocking making that somewhere. You know, Hollywood Studios obviously has their thing going on. They have a bunch of stuff going on. Maybe that's the only place that they can come up with it. They want to use this technology. They want to create the, the world's largest indoor roller coaster and have amazing technology with it. Uh, that's great. Um, you know, maybe it's time to open up that fifth gate to do things like that in your fifth park instead of taking it and putting it into Epcot. Um, and again, that's, that's kind of my only beef with what's going on. Uh, everything else I'm, I'm loving. You know, the stuff at Hollywood Studios I really love. You know, I, I really do like the, the Mickey Mouse Runaway Rail. I think it's going to be a fantastic ride over there. You know, they pulled the great movie ride out, which is disappointing as well. But uh, nothing that I'm, you know, too terribly distraught over. Cammie's really distraught over it because she really loved that ride. So Banana Cabana, this is an absolutely amazing uh, outdoor bar. You can come have a great drink here. This is always, always beautiful here. And it's really never that packed. Uh, you can always pretty much come in here and get a seat. Uh, they have a great menu. It's actually the menu from uh, Sebastian's that you can get over here and you can eat outside. You can have a great drink right by the pool. It's beautiful right on the water. Definitely one of my favorite pools on property is the pirate themed, the Buccaneer pool over here.
Eric, a drink at the bar? Yeah, that sounds really good right now, especially after walking around. I start to get a little dehydrated after I do these videos walking around so much and trying to talk through these whole things. Let's go inside. I'm sure you guys have already seen this before, but let's just hang out a little bit. Ah, it really does. That smell hits you right when you walk in. It's so fresh and it's so clean. I truly wish that I had the, the smell o vision. It's, it's wow, it smells amazing in here. I don't even know how to describe it. It's kind of a kind of a vanilla smell as you kind of walk in. It's just it's very, very clean. You know, like it or not, you know, the changes that they made in here. Um, you may like it, you may not, but as it is, I mean, it, it truly is beautiful. You know, if you don't like that they made the changes in here, you have to respect how beautiful they actually made it. It's very bright. I love how open it is in here now. Uh, the sunlight that comes through is just really, really pretty. And again, it's a gorgeous day outside today, so everybody is pretty much at the theme parks. So it's not busy here at all. It's a great time to come back in the afternoon. Hey, how are you? Um, so you can see, we've got a great menu here. Oh, you can create your own bowl, choice of two tacos, beef and mushroom blended cheeseburger, awesome. How are you guys? Very good. Well, yeah, live right now. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Got everybody all over the world all watching. The world. Yeah. Everyone all over the world. This is the Caribbean Beach Resort where we have the best quick service you'll ever find. Absolutely. Oh, no. I'm spilling all my menu. That's all right. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, we have, like, five different options. Okay. So, to all you vegetarians and vegans in the world, we have um, a plant-based burger, completely vegan. We have plant-based tacos and plant-based bowls. Very so, cool. Awesome. Very cool. Sounds food. delicious. And delicious food for everyone else, too. Absolutely. It's gorgeous here. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Hey, everybody. How are you? <laughs> All right, so this is definitely the time if you want to get in here, grab a bite to eat, uh, come back, cool off from the parks. You know, if you start out the Magic Kingdom and you come back and you want to head uh, to Epcot in the evening, that is definitely an option. Or, you know, if you start out at Hollywood Studios, ride the Skyliner back, and then jump on it and head over to Epcot after you grab a quick uh, swim in the pool or some lunch. Michael, I want a burger and fries, please. Yeah, that sounds really good right now. John, everybody loves Rob. I'm seeing that. More and more people are starting to, to recognize me in the blog. That's very cool. Castaway J RJ, uh, the white deltas on the monorail lime were repainted black. To blue. Uh, I did not notice that. I'll have to take a look at that. That's the way that you can identify between green and lime, uh, between um, the different colors, uh, coral and what was the other one? Coral and peach, I think it was. Uh, you can see by the white deltas. I did a whole video on that uh, that really describes in detail everything about the coloring on the monorails, but I did not know they re repainted those. I'll have to check that out. See, what are we talking about here? No brainer, they did acquire more land. Uh, Longstanding holdout finally sold. They did, that's, uh, that's down by Celebration. They, they acquired a ton of acreage down there. And I think somebody was, who was saying about the, uh, the wetlands, Becky M. Yeah, that's, uh, it's all gonna be developed for, uh, for wetlands protected areas, which is a good thing because that will free up other areas uh, that they would need to move because there has to be so much uh, space available for wetlands and protected areas. So that would be pretty awesome for them to have that extra space in order to free up other areas uh, inside the property here closer that they can hopefully do that, uh, that fifth gate. Earl, the new land will be used. Um, let's see, offset other areas of the park were currently used for nature uh, reclamation 
Disney will use the acquisitions for uh, that they're building on adjacent property that they already own. I think in general that's kind of what I was saying, maybe, that uh, they're going to use that for, for protected lands and open up other areas inside, a little closer to property here. Dominic, very great video. I have to leave the study for my math exam. We'll be here the next stream, hopefully. Dominic, thank you for being here. Good luck on your math exam. Uh, we all know that you're going to do well. Uh, I am terrible at math. My daughter is excellent at math, so she uh, wishes you luck as well. Danielle, sorry if you already discussed, came in late uh, as they were uh, weight testing the gondolas now. Any more gondolas uncovered? Now, the gondolas over the past week have been oh, fairly, um, fairly the same. There hasn't been much uh, new. They are adding more and more weight, uh, different um, load testings through the Hollywood Studios line. Last time I was over there, you can see some of the gondolas have, you know, more of that, you know, five foot sag or so in the haul rope. Others don't, so they, they're still not at full load testing. Uh, what we talked about in the beginning of the video is cast member testing is going to start in the beginning of April. So they're currently, um, you know, getting uh, cast members ready to, to make their voyages across and start testing the, the Skyliners. So physical bodies will start going on. And that will definitely be on the, the Hollywood Studios line. Hopefully, they're going to start uh, getting this Pop Century line opened up as well. That definitely has to be next in the evolution of things. And I'm really surprised that I haven't seen anything go over yet. Um, I come here pretty much every day to, to keep checking and to see when they're going to start running those back and forth between uh, Pop and Caribbean. But like I said, as far as opening, uh, as far as progress towards that, it really has to do with what's going on at the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean Beach because that is the central hub. That has to be, you know, as secure as possible, as complete as possible for them to open. Could they open up Hollywood Studios and the Pop Century line? It is possible, but again, you're gonna have to walk through, if they're still working on that Epcot line, you're gonna have to walk through that area that would still kind of be under construction and still under testing phases. So I'm not sure. I, I, it's The Caribbean Beach is kind of the, the, the piece of the puzzle here that we need to keep an eye on as far as them getting this open in time for uh, Galaxy's Edge. Michael Parker, hello, great to see you. Again, uh, another live video, South Southampton, uh, England. Welcome from my uh, UK, always great to have you guys here. Danielle, you're amazing, a huge thanks again. You're very, very welcome. Just always great to have you guys here. No Brainer 60 is pop uh, station ready to go. Uh, they've, they've really done a lot of work over there. By the looks of it, it looks fairly ready, um, even the the exterior, most of the exterior looks to be done. Like I said, they keep doing work on the towers through Hourglass Lake. Every, every day I go over there, there's crews that are actually up on top of the, uh, the towers doing work, whatever work, wiring or, you know, if they're testing. But they're always up on those towers, so there could be something going on as far as delaying the process. Maybe something they need to change with the towers. Uh, this is interesting here as well. They've actually opened all this up. As you, if you remember back in any of the uh, Caribbean Beach updates, this was all fenced off during the construction. There used to be the, uh, the tent that was here that had the buffet. Uh, there used to be the, the little uh, the bar, the banana, banana, banana cabana bar was here, the little makeshift uh, store that they had. So this is all opened up now. This looks really nice. This looks really completely different now that you see Everything opened up and this fence area is gone. It looks a lot better. So that's really great to see. Robert, I will be down in 58 days on May the 10th for a week. I can't wait. Very, very cool. Can't wait for you to get here too. One uh, Catman One, hey, welcome. Chris uh, Chris Salanta, welcome. Liam Rob Remy's Ratatouille uh, adventure is wet. Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is wet. I'm not quite sure what that means. Like wet paint? <laughs> Sometimes you gotta clue me in a little bit on what you're, what you're trying to say. 
I, uh, I have a, a slow thought process sometimes. Uh, Reggie, will they still have island rooms uh, in the resort? Yes, this is all still island themed. Caribbean Beach has not changed their theming at all. Uh, it's just getting more and more beautiful. Sammy going down for a week on May 11th. Awesome, can't wait for you to get here. Liam Robb's Remy Ratatouille Adventure is set to open spring of 2020, about a year away. Uh, that is awesome too. I was thinking more towards 2021, but uh, I love 2020. I'm definitely really excited about riding that. See, those are more my style of rides. I'm, I'm not a roller coaster person, and that doesn't have anything to do with, with why, you know, Guardians is kind of on my list. That's just because of uh, where it is and, and what it looks like. But my kind of rides are Ratatouille and the Mickey and Minnie ride that's coming. You know, the old style Disney dark rides. That's, that's kind of what I relate to Disney. That's what I really love. But uh, obviously everybody has their personal preference on what uh, works best for them. Michael, I know there's been a lot of thought concerning the Animal Kingdom Phase 2. The Skyliner, what do you think about the possibility to the water parks? Uh, I don't see the water parks being part of that process. Again, uh, there's just not enough volume to warrant sending the, the Skyliner over there. I think Liam was saying something about uh, they're going to start running buses from the resorts again, which would be interesting. Um, but again, the volume is just not there. The same with Disney Springs. There's not enough um, large crowd volumes. I'm not saying that Disney Springs doesn't have a lot of people that go through it because it does, but it's not the, the huge mass numbers of people that you would have in the morning, in the evening that warrants the use of the Skyliner. The Skyliner is designed to move a large number of people in a short amount of time. So that's, oh, I don't know. It's gonna go live for the whole world here, so. <laughs> You're in Disney World, we're supposed to love each other, remember? <laughs> I, uh, trust me, I know, I have that at home. See, Amy, uh, loving your updates. Kids and I will be staying at Pop uh, mid-July for eight nights. First trip since 2013. Very, very cool. I hope you guys have a great time. Uh, Pop Century, beautiful resort. You're going to love it there. Sue will be there uh, next, uh, let's see, the second and third week of December. Excited to see Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and all the updates. Hoping that the ride replacing Great Movie Ride is open, uh, which would be the Mickey and Minnie Runaway Railway. And it definitely should be. I was under the assumption it was supposed to be under by the end of uh, open by the end of summer, but some people have been kind of correcting me on that and saying more in the fall. But uh, I would most definitely say it'll be open by the winter. Obviously, they, you know, they can get Galaxy's Edge open sooner. They can definitely get uh, the Mickey and Minnie ride open. Galaxy's Edge is just a massive undertaking. And they're ahead of schedule on that. So we're eventually going to come full circle up here. This is Barbados, which used to be Trinidad North. And this is kind of my favorite second area in the Caribbean beach. It's just really pretty over here. It's very peaceful. It's right next to Old Port Royal. So it's a very short walk. You have the Disney Skyliner station that's right over the bridge. You have a very beautiful pool right here, but it's just, it's very quiet. It's very peaceful. Same with Trinidad. Trinidad has the Spyglass Grill, a beautiful pool. Uh, it's very secluded back here. And again, it's not, I don't think it's that far of a walk from Old Port Royal. And truly, after walking these resorts so many times, uh, they, none of them really seem too large I don't know what I'm the words I'm trying to find here but too overwhelming you know they are large resorts but you know you can walk from one end to these resorts and the other within you know 10 minutes and I'm actually walking uphill a little bit here so pardon me if I get a little out of breath 
Hopefully no buses will honk at me when I go by here again. Hello. Ah, oh, okay. Liam Rob, uh, is it rumored? It is rumored for Spaceship Earth to close over a year to get uh, track replacement and scene refurb uh, to get the ride update. Yeah, I've heard that too. Do you have any actual dates that you've seen on that? Yeah, I know that they were gonna do the, uh, redo the interior track and all that. Uh, I hadn't heard a year. A year would be a pretty long time. Hopefully uh, that'll all get done before 2021, which I'm sure it will. Michael, Skyliner was built for massive crowds. Going to Star Wars at Hollywood Studios, Epcot was a bonus. Skyliner will probably, uh, will probably be paid for by higher room rates, no money uh, going anywhere else. You know, however they, uh, they recoup those costs, we'll see. Um, you know, Disney obviously wants to make sure that their guests are treated well here. And, you know, they, at least they're listening to the feedback. Obviously, you know, people have feedback about the buses that, you know, they talk about the, the long waits that you have for the bus, the huge lines. Um, so, you know, they're putting, they're putting things in place to try to accommodate some of the, the things that they're hearing about, you know, crowd feedback as far as uh, guest feedback. How they pay for that, we'll see as we go along. Let's see, is it Mick? Mike P. Uh, has Planet Watch reopened at Animal Kingdom? As far as I know, it did. I know it was closed for a while, but I think it did reopen. It's been so long since I've been up to uh, Rafiki's Planet up there. Um, I'm planning on going to the Animal Kingdom soon, so I will definitely uh, try to get up and uh, check to see if that is open for you. The BOMO, uh, are you an ex-smoker? I am not. I've never smoked in my life, but if you've listened to my videos, I lost 130 pounds as of recent. So, um, you know, just still have a ways to go. So I'm not in athlete shape, but uh, I'm definitely uh, getting a lot better. And I do a ton of walking around here. But no, I've never, uh, never been a smoker and never been a drinker either. I don't, uh, I don't drink, I never really drank very much at all. Crazy Domo, I think uh, that the new costume products is better integrated with the parks and should recoup uh, the money back faster. I knew, oh, the new consumer products is better integrated with the parks. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they have a, a ton of uh, great products that are coming through. I, I personally funnel a ton of money through here buying all kinds of stuff. So Disney always has a story uh, for why they're raising prices so often. Yeah, I mean, you could go on and on about why they raise prices. You know, it's, it's worth it. They build some cool stuff, but they, they're building a lot of cool stuff, but it's, it's so compacted into these four parks. They need to expand. They need to give people room to breathe. That's the, that's the biggest thing that people say now is, you know, you want to pay $140 to come down here and be bottlenecked and hardly be able to ride anything because everything's three hours just to get on. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to get into the bashing those kind of things, but you know, you can form your own opinions. Uh, they they just need to they need to branch out. That fifth gate, it, it, it's it has to happen sometime. Disney Saver the Skyliner was built for growing crowds overall, not just Galaxy's Edge. Uh, look at the numbers; the economy is doing awesome, uh, so there is more crowds. Absolutely, like I said, you know, I was just saying that there's so many people here. They need to they need to find other places to put them. Plus, they're building all these new resorts. They're just bringing more and more and more people in. Michael, Rob is a tall man everyone can look up to. <laughs> yeah, I I'm, I'm, guess I'm pretty tall. I'm like 6'2". Dave, see, I got to run. Uh, we'll watch uh, later tonight. Have a great day. Thank you for being here, my friend. Greg, uh, hey, Rob, which Galaxy's Edge are you most excited about? Uh, are we talking about Disneyland or the one here? Obviously the one here for me, because I'll be able to see it. Uh, as far as rides go, uh, the Millennium Falcon ride is going to be awesome. I'm excited about that. I'm a little nervous about it because it might be kind of intense and, you know, I'm, but I'm definitely going to want to ride it. The, uh, the Rise of the Resistance seems to be, again, more 
of that uh, trackless ride system, uh, the big 3D screens and stuff like that. So that should be very cool. So I'm looking forward to that just because it's more of my type of ride. But uh, sure, no problem. But I mean, who, what person hasn't dreamed of piloting the Millennium Falcon since they were a kid? Pink, uh, Pink Tigger agree there should be a, a fifth gate. Yeah, that's the hot thing now. I think everybody is really out there saying it. We'll see what happens at D23. Uh, I would like for them to announce my Pixar land over in Hollywood Studios, but a fifth gate, you know, Disney villains, villains heroes thing uh, would be awesome. We'll see now that they, they're buying uh, Fox, you know, what other entities are gonna bring in with that, you know, they can incorporate into a park. Uh, so many different uh, options that they have now coming up. Christie's uh, Corner, I could hear the birds. Yeah, I'm standing right underneath the tree. Uh, always beautiful bird sounds here. Uh, nature, you can always hear nature anywhere inside Disney. Uh, that's why they definitely want to keep the, the conservation lands. We were just talking about the wetlands and the, the land that they buy up for conservation uh, because they want to keep all this wildlife through here because that's, that's part of the, the intrigue of coming to Disney as well is you know, how they merge you know, all the amazing things that they build here but it's also very beautiful, it's very peaceful. Uh, all the water, all the greenery, all the, the plant life, uh, the different things that you would not find in you know, areas that you may live in. You come down here and it's just a beautiful experience overall. JT Vids, have you heard when the Rise of the Resist uh, Resistance ride will open? I believe it's supposed to be towards the end of the year. Uh, I don't know if that's actually in writing anywhere, but uh, Galaxy or uh, Smuggler's Run is supposed to open right when the park opens or the land opens and then the rise of the resistance i think is more towards the end of the year that's just what i think though greg uh, disney villains uh will be the best idea for the fifth gate yeah that's been out there for years i mean i i remember hearing you know back in the 90s when i used to come here people would talk about a, a villains a hero's villains park so that idea has been around for a very very long time uh, and i would love to see something like that uh, come true The Horns do Disney. Hello from the UK. 103, 163 days till we arrive. Very, very cool. I know that countdown will go by very, very quickly. Crazy Domo, I think instead of more Pixar, they should uh, use 20th Century Fox stuff. Uh, kill those dead ends in uh, Disney's Hollywood Studios. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, they, they bought Fox. Obviously, that deal is going through. So what they might bring in with that, uh, you know, the more they inquire, the more they acquire, uh, the better features they can bring into the theme parks, uh, better movies, all that kind of stuff. So the, uh, there's so many different options. You know, we could talk about till we're blue in the face all the things that Disney could do, but you know, there's Imagineers that are sitting in a room that are much smarter than we are that are coming up with with amazing things, amazing technologies, and uh, you know, amazing things to do with the the things that they already do own. Yeah, D23 is definitely going to be. Uh, uh, some pretty cool stuff coming out of there. They should do a Zootopia land in Animal Kingdom. That's a great idea too. That would be very cool. I haven't heard that one before. That's a that's a really good idea. Rafiki, that's where it'll be. Rafiki's Zootopia. Yeah. Really? That sounds like a great idea. So there you go. Somebody contributed right behind me. The uh, Rafiki's Planet Watch, maybe into a Zootopia area. The Bomo carbon uh, offsets. I almost bid on a property that couldn't ever be built on in the Orlando area. I don't know uh, what was there before. Yeah, I get, uh, the Skyliner is a huge thing for, for the carbon output, you know, putting their, their green thumbprint. Disney's trying to go green on a lot of different issues. So that's another thing why the Skyliner is uh, definitely gonna be so popular as well. Peter, what happens to the Simpsons ride? I'm not 100% sure that's over at Universal. Um, I'm not sure if anything happened to it over there. I, I haven't been to Universal in quite a while, so I don't have an answer for you on that one. Uh, let's see here. Let me get a couple more in here, and I think my, uh, my voice is about done here. Crazy Domo, you think they will ever improve the test track, Cars Land ride system, uh, so they don't break down and stop so much? I, who knows, you know, the, you know, they'll try to improve the technology as it goes. You know, it's a fun ride system. Um, 
you know, they can always make improvements. I'm sure as they, as they go along in the future, new technologies will come up and they'll be able to enhance it and improvement and improvement. Eh, see, I'm about done with my, my talking here, guys. So let me get you turned around here. All right, uh, I think I'm done. I think I'm red in the face. That was a pretty long walk around Caribbean today and uh, I gotta get something to drink. So always appreciate you guys being here. Thank you guys so much for the, uh, the super chats. Um, there's a ton of them today. William, thank you so much. Joe, amazing. I know you're going to watch later, but Joe, you are just extremely generous today. Uh, out of this world, my friend. Uh, Richard, thank you so much. Uh, Bob, thank you for that $20. Uh, Joe, again, uh, so much that you donated today, today, Joe. It's amazing. Zippity Doodad, always great to have you here. Much appreciated. Uh, Matthew Kine, thank you as well. Uh, you guys visit PassportToTheParks.com, all kinds of great stuff there. Follow my social media. Again, I really need a lot of love on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Um, posting some, some great stuff over there, and I could use uh, some followers and stuff uh, if, if you're so inclined to do so. Subscribe here if you haven't done so. I uh, just hit 8,000 subscribers today, so thank you everybody out there. It's much appreciated. Uh, I will continue to try to bring these uh, videos to you and have a lot of fun and bring you great information. So we will talk to you guys very soon. I will be back. Uh, Let's see, tomorrow's Thursday, Friday. I'll definitely be here Thursday and Friday, so we'll have a lot of uh, fun, and hopefully they'll get uh, more stuff going on this Pop Century line over here. Uh, until then, have a great night, and we'll talk to you guys very, very soon. Bye-bye.